Kwane. In my language, Kosa, respect is built into the language. When you say Molo, it just simply means hi, hello. And when you want to say it to more than one person, you will say Molweni. So the, the course is on globalization and leadership. And the intention of the course was to spend this year getting a sense of what is it about globalization that impinges on our work as educational leaders? Well, uh, education is important for any country, especially with us, uh, where the community has been excluded from facilities like education. And it has become therefore extremely important for us to participate in this program. And that is why we have come here to Mashungulu and to many other places. It's because no country can progress without education. <laughs> so the course provided the opportunity to spend this period of time in South Africa at our partner university, Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University. We were not there as tourists. We were there to deepen relationships, to allow the relationships and the context to shape how we think about ourselves and our place in relation to our work. So one of the reasons that we went down to South Africa in the first place was um, a part of a globalization work was looking at specific issues in education through a different lens outside of Seattle, outside of Washington State. So the lens that I went down there, the thing that I was hoping to look at when I went down there is how do teachers get support? I went down to South Africa thinking about um, teacher leaders and how teacher leaders impact decision making. Being a science teacher, I was really interested in seeing how science was taught, what strategies were being used, what curriculum was being used, um, specifically around biology. Um, initially, when, when we were planning our trip to South Africa, I was thinking that I was going down to look um, more at instructional practices in classrooms for content area, math or science or reading, um, but very quickly changed my mind um, and was struck by the the context and the culture that was different and the topics were very similar because content area is content area and so the similarities um, similarities were there and so I was quickly switched over to thinking about how we teach in any given area and given any set of circumstances. The people that I met in South Africa were really creative and innovative about finding different resource and, um, and, and like I said, doing really powerful things for kids. Bruce Damon's principal of Sapphire Road Primary School was one of those people and I wrote a quote down that he said, material satisfaction does not equal easy learning. So you could look at it both ways. Um, we have a lot of the material satisfaction, maybe that's going down a little bit these days with, with the economy the way it is and schools getting less funding but they've figured out ways to access the community and their resources. Um, people power seems to be what they rely on most. We, we serve basically a community of about 11,000 learners and plus minus 50,000 um, houses and informal settlements. So we see the schools as being a strong social component of bringing about change. What we know is that human resource is the most important uh, resource that one can have. And if you don't have human resource, then you, you, know, you can have all the other resources. But if your human resource is failing and they're not doing what they're supposed to do, then it means you still have a long way. And I think in South Africa, we're fortunate in the sense that uh, in this day and era, a lot of black teachers are trying to upgrade and get an education. So maybe in five, ten years' time, when you come back, you would find a different scenario. In Mirano, so as part of the, through the active schools concept, is our skills development. Because of poverty, um, it's caused by people being unskilled. So the governing council, you meet the chairperson later, um, decided that we need to, to embark as a school on a skills training program for our, 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 our unemployed and youth and parents. So we have skilled over 150 people. This is one of our most popular courses, the, the welding course. And at the moment, they're busy securing one of the community centers. So what we do is 
we offer out our services so that this so that our our, our these young gentlemen here, because these gentlemen that are training here now become the eyes and the ears of the school to make sure that nothing happens to the school because they're the unemployed youth of the area and they help us look after our school, they help us fix our school and return, we then give them the skill of welding. We, we, we always believe in our school that uh, education is not only about books, it's not to obtain a hundred percent in mathematics or in science, but what they are doing you know, for their school is also another form of education. For them, education is quite very important and they know that. And as educators, we've got an obligation to continue producing uh, students who are going to make a meaningful contribution to the economy of our country. Education. Education, you are the key to open the bright future doors of opportunity and success. Offering vast visions to the thirsty mind, your worth knows no bounds. Because you are victory over poverty and mental slavery, economic failure runs from your presence. You are the hope of our future. Education. I guess what I would say to somebody who is wondering if um, you know, travel study is a good investment would be that um, yes, definitely it is. And for me, what it helped me do is um, look at things in, in South Africa so carefully. I mean, everything was new. Um, just a little example was they don't say students, they say learners, which it took me like two hours to figure out that's what they were saying. I can't think, what is that word? Because it sounded like Lana's. So um, I, I think this trip was a life-changing experience for me, and I would definitely recommend that you know, others take advantage of it. Um, you, just, you just can't to get this another way, as others have said. One of the benefits to traveling is it puts you in a position that you're comparing yourself to the environment that you're in as opposed to bringing something else into your environment and comparing that to what you do. So um, maybe a fine difference, but it's the perspective that changes a little bit about who the visitor is and who, who has the body of knowledge and who the learner is. And I, I don't think that you can accomplish the same thing by inviting outside into your world. I think you have to leave your world and step into somebody else's. And I, I always go back to this idea that, that hope is this really tangible strategy. And I, was re and I was reminded multiple times that when you don't have hope, you don't, it doesn't matter what else you have um, because you're not, you've lost that ability to look forward and look ahead. And so for me, really thinking about hope as being um, you know, this really strong piece of, of motivation of resource and, um, and of, of just the future. As a science teacher, I'm going to use a metaphor. It's also a language arts teacher. So micro and macro. So the microscope and then the telescope. Um, South Africa helped me see um, how my students fit into a bigger picture of this, um, this global world we're diving into. But also um, it helped me see how each individual child has needs and each individual teacher has needs and has a context. So coming back I had this renewed appreciation for my students and where they come from and the needs that they have and the communities from which, from which they come and um, the role that um, that our school has in the ecology of our community and like Laurie said it's not a it's not an island but we give and we take and so just seeing the relationships that could be built and the relationships that, um, that do exist with Cleveland and our surrounding community, I wanted to see how I could learn from my experiences in South Africa and, and pull those into what I'm doing to see how we could strengthen those relationships within our community but as well as with the, the families and the um, teachers and maybe some students that are in South Africa as well. So I like to, to focus in on each individual student and, and their needs as well as see how they fit into a broader scheme. And if I could go back today, totally would. <laughs> mm -hmm.